Good afternoon. I will reintroduce myself. My name is Wilson Baez. I am the director of Microsoft Chile. I'm a Uruguayan, but I'm living in uh, Chile, so I'm representing Microsoft Corporation. We will be talking about this in more depth. This is just an overview of Windows 8. This is the first one from what we showed today with Nicolás Jodal and Eduardo Mangarelli. This is the first session. And tomorrow, Pablo Garcia, who is our head architect, also a Uruguayan, living in Chile and working with my team. He will be talking a little bit more with more technical issues, more in-depth issues, and how from GeneXus, and this being more integrated with the presentation by Alejandro Silva tomorrow as well, after Pablo's presentation, we will be talking about how with GeneXus we can create and generate applications for Windows 8. So, we will continue with this overview of Windows 8. And we want to analyze which are the opportunities that we believe we will have both, both you and us for the uh, release of this new platform. Uh, we will analyze the new opportunities, the changes, the new experience with Windows 8. We'll see the runtime or the APIs or the programming interfaces provided by Windows 8 being used by Attach for the applications and the generation. And we're going to use, uh, talk about the Windows Store and the opportunity to distribute applications. As you see, how do we see this opportunity? Let me start here with a very graphic description. Today, we are reaching out to 700 million users of Windows. These are legal users. You could do your own estimations and consider a few extra users that are not legal, maybe the same amount, but let's imagine it's 700 million users of legal um, window users. Uh, 700 million copies in the enterprise and consumer world um, with the uh, manufacturers of hardware. Look at the Android system, 345 million, iOS, 196 million, and the Mac, 32 million. So this is the reality today. If I add the protection of IDC on the sale of PCs at the end of 2013, we will be talking about 300 million extra PCs um, that are delivered in the year 2013. There is another detail. Windows 8 is an operation system that optimizes Windows 7, improves it, reinvents it, uh, pro makes it progress uh, in some aspects, but it works better on the current machines. So if of the 700 million PCs that we have with Windows 7 today, Consider that 1 million or 100 million of such Windows 7s uh, will now have Windows 8. And in addition, the 2013 shipment will come with Windows 8. They will be shipped with Windows 8. By the end of 2013, there go there's going to be 400 million uh, devices running Windows 8. Could be 400 or 500. But just to give you conservative figures, it's going to be 400 million by the end of the year 2013. This is going to be the ecosystem, the broadest ecosystem, the largest ecosystem in the world to make this a wonderful business opportunity for you. To complement this, uh, this is why we have created Windows 8. Windows 8 represents the evolution and Microsoft's answer to many changes that have taken place in the last two or three years in the way users 
both corporate and end users are using the technology. In this concept of multiple form factors, as uh, Mr. Hodal said this morning, because there is no ideal size. We don't feel the owners of the truth in terms of size. It wouldn't be correct to say this is the size that people need if they use a cell phone or a tablet. We don't believe in that. We believe in a more open, thriving, creative industry that will create uh, devices for the kitchen, for the restroom, for the taxi, etc. We understand that the users will use multiple devices in multiple formats depending on the scenario, the place where they are. If I go to the beach, I take a certain kind of device that is uh, sand resistant, that's cheap. If I lose it, I don't care. If I go to a swimming pool in a hotel, I want a more fashionable device. I want something different. And I stay under the uh, parasol so I can use this tablet, for example, or read something. If I go to the beach, I take something else. And then in my room in the hotel, I may have my old ultra book or my notebook and in the kids uh, room I have an all-in-one touch you know it's true uh, all-in-one touch and they get up and they touch the screen it's all dirty and sticky you know they draw and they do the things there so we believe in an industry that is open creative uh, with multiple manufacturers not a single one not just one owner of the shops and the truth I think I'm clear right I don't know. Do you take a, uh, your surfboard with a computer as well? I'll talk about that later. Another important change, mobility also changed in terms of its definition, or maybe the users changed. A notebook meant mobility in the past. A notebook means mobility. I cannot take my PC if I go from here to there. If I buy a notebook, when I bought my first notebook, I still have it. It's a compact. It was mobility. That was precisely what mobility meant. I had to sit there, um, connect it, uh, turn it on, and so on. But mobility changed in terms of its definition. Mobility means using the power of a computer, using the smartphone or the tablet when I am doing something else. And this has a, a sideline problem. Some people use the Twitter and they drive. That's something we should try to avoid. Avoid. But that is the concept of mobility today. To Twitter when you are or sending a text message, if you are having lunch with your wife, uh, she's listening to me, I apologize. Uh, but sometimes that happens. That's not using the things correctly. But mobility today means using while I do something else. The application developers need a very powerful connectivity or a more fluid connectivity with the one who's using the application. I need to develop the application, deliver it faster, uh, more in a more transparent way, and then receive information on how that person is using it, at what time during the day, what is the age range, who's using it, what characteristics do they have. So that demographic information on the use of applications will allow me to create applications and modify my applications to make them more successful, like changing colors, changing new features or expanding features that probably were very successful and I never thought they would be originally. And then something we said during the panel is the concept, concept of services that are inherent part of the software that we deliver, what Microsoft calls software plus services. What is more relevant, the cloud or the device? Everything is relevant. I must give the user an experience. If I have a good device but no music service available in the country, what's the use? What, what, why? will he buy it? If I have a good music or video or a Apple service, but I don't have one um, that you can take to the pool, 
and feel that you're sophisticated, well, uh, that's an incomplete experience. So we believe that all these factors that have been modifying the industry of IT in recent years are the reason why we are bringing Windows 8 as an answer today. Of course, we have reimagined Windows with a new start screen. This is the new start screen that the user sees when he enters window. Windows is uh, being uh, thought of for a touch screen. We have launched um, Windows Tablet Edition in 2002, I think. but. That was not touch first. It had not been devised for that. It was um, thought for a pencil or a user that was going to use keyboard and mouse. And if it became a tablet, we could use it with touch system. But now we have reimagined Windows so that touch is the primary experience without leaving the keyboard and the mouse outside. Uh, they are very relevant for many applets that require more precision. Can you use AutoCAD with touch? At least with my finger, I wouldn't be able to do that. Nicolas has some techniques like using a fingernail, but that's or use uh, something else as a device. That's not the possibility. The tablet for AutoCAD or the device for AutoCAD will need something that's more precise, like a mouse or a digitalizer. And Windows 8 will bring digitalizers apart from surfaces that respond to touch. This is the uh, result of our partners who produce the hardware worldwide. Finally, a very important message. Every aspect of Windows 7 that was successful has been improved and enhanced for the launching of Windows 8. It consumes less memory. Uh, it performs better, and all the jobs that Windows 7 performed um, correctly, Windows 8 will do even better. So that's why the hard work you have now can really work with an upgrade to Windows 8. To cover uh, these multiple factors in this hybrid world of devices it has to do with the design of Windows 8 to cover the scenario of tablets, notebooks, netbook, ultra, only once, all that with one single OS. It's the same kernel, the same that covers all aspects, not just covers the scenarios of chips that we know of, that we have used in recent years, the Intel chips, but also ARM chips. There are many in the market, and these are the chipsets that dominate the mobile world uh, due to reasons that have to do with energy consumption and um, dissipation of heat. So Microsoft has redesigned or recombined the Windows kernel so it can run and be prepared with chips that are the ones that feed and give uh, power to all intelligent smartphones. What is then this uh, Windows 8 experience that we envisage? What makes it different? What is it that we think will uh, make a change or offer something different. We assume that the enterprise scenario is waiting for the Windows tablets. This is my personal experience from general managers and executives in large companies that have tried to use tablets with other OS in the enterprise world and have not been able to because there's no good connection, because there are no security or encryption um, devices. And at the same time, to give this public the potential of the tablets that we know in the consumer world, music, applications, games, also 
to bring it to uh, combine this experience that is quick, fluid, that is uh, something you can be immersed in and have a complete screen. You're probably used to multiple windows and where you can choose this window, the other window, multitasks, and move to an experience as you saw this morning with a keynote with Nicolás Jodala and Eduardo Mangarelli, where the content is the most important thing, the application. The applications occupy the whole screen and the user can focus on what he is doing, can focus on the application at hand, can focus on the content. The content is the king. The application is the king. It's not what is around it. Of course, uh, an experience that is going to be manipulated by touch, with um, supported by a keyboard and mouse, a network of applications that collaborate. This is not an operation system that launches apps. This is not launching apps. No, there are other uh, apps launches. There are other people who do that. No, no, no. If you take the cell phone from other companies, turn it on, and you go to Facebook, you use, you want to Twitter, you leave Facebook, you enter Twitter. You want to do Bloomberg, you go out of one and get into another. Ups, ups, ups. You come in and out, in and out. That's a launcher of applications. Quite interesting. Good. But we understand that a modern OS for tablets and devices must offer something else, an infrastructure, a system that connects applications. What do I mean by this? If I am using a very well-known application for tablets and the cell phones that is database for pictures, I can search there and the film is this. But from that moment, I can share that search within the application with the application of Amazon Kindle to buy something related to that film, the book, for example, or using uh, uh, to buy the film itself. So the applications connect and speak to each other using commands and verbs and actions that the operation system provides. There is a common philosophy to the Windows 8 application. They all collaborate. I don't need to go to Twitter or leave Twitter, enter Facebook, leave Facebook. I can have an application that is a hub of people, a hub of people, where I do all that has to do with people. And of course, to have an experience that covers all the architectures of chips and all the PC architectures. Now, let us invite Pablo to tell us how this can come true. What are the technical things we can do? Thank you, Wilson. Well, the first new element that we have here is Windows Runtime. We will be telling it, telling a bit more about it, and of course tomorrow as well. But we have a new runtime environment for applications. There's a lot of experience of many years by building OS and by building environments. So what we did was to draw a clean slate in an API that allows to have that type of connectivity and that type of services that uh, modern applications require so that developers can build applications with huge uh, capabilities for connections, integration with relatively little effort. So we'll do a drill down of this. The new experience of Windows 8 from the active tiles that we have on the screen that are telling the user, click on here, click on there, or the small icons that you have on the screen. Well, all that implies a huge back-end infrastructure where our application or our back-end services will have to notify the application installed on that machine that there are three new pieces of news to be read and that these are the pictures without our application even running. The OS will be aligned with radio stations. If it's a tablet, for example, 
It, when the user is uh, running on the screen to set up the whole tile and show that there are three news feeds there so that the user can click on, tap on there, and enter. So we will be talking about that. And of course, we will be talking about the Windows Store, where we have uh, broken some paradigms or eliminated some restrictions in terms of stores that we had so far. The uh, core part of the OS is the same in terms of fonts for ARM, for x86 devices, Intel and AMD, and for the Windows Phone 8 uh, phones. We will be sharing the kernel among the different Microsoft platforms on that Windows 8 kernel. And we licensed our ARN architecture, and we designed all those processors with the three uh, SOC processors uh, manufacturers that we have for Windows now. So the idea is to have an, an OS that's especially prepared for that hardware. So we went even further in terms of building an uh, operating system. These processors will be optimum for executing those applications on Windows 8. We have the old desktop model in that environment for ARM and for x86. You will see the office running on both desktop environments, even though the office is now touch-centric and touch-first. And you will see a good experience of the different parts of the office family. When you see it running on ARM, it will be on a desktop interface. When you have applications that are nowadays being run on Windows 7, those applications will run as is with no changes whatsoever in Windows 8. There is, um, There are practically no changes in the API, in the traditional API from Windows 7 to 8. They're just minor things in terms of games, but just minimum security controls that wouldn't, won't let you turn on or off some services. Of course, this does not exist in ARM because there are no legacy applications there. And we will see this in x86. If you want to run your old system that did something specific in Clipper, probably Wilson had done that, then you will have to buy the x86 tablet. So there's a whole new world, a model for creating sophisticated applications that allows to connect applications. There are contracts being met within different applications. Uh, applications ask for permissions to the user through a sort of contract, and then the OS authorizes them to do certain things. And through those sort of contracts, applications have multiple points of entry, and they are able to uh, dialogue between each other so that the user can call the applications that have connectivity capabilities with this application and thus exchange information. This achieves great dynamization of applications within that WinRT environment. In terms of tablets, you will basically be running WinRT applications with a very refined API with different flavors in terms of languages. And here is where we have the major innovation of this Windows version. It is that the OS objects are projected on three runtime environments, which are native of the platform and which are inside the operating system. And when you see a dialog box or a window or an object, or when you use an object to send information with a tap and send and several communications technologies, the same object can be used from C++, from .NET, or from HTML5. 
If you are programming in HTML5, this is a huge leap towards that. This is a major push so that you are not sort of condemned of building in a language that pushes you downward so that you won't be able to uh, use anything from the platform. But you will be able to create HTML5 applications with all the uh, knowledge that you have in SS3. We will see tomorrow how this is done, how this fits in in terms of the Windows platform. But since this runs as a native application, this can use local things in the uh, machine, the library, music store, the camera, etc. HTML5 is the first class citizen in Windows 8 and applications in HTML5 and JavaScript will run with the same performance and capacity as the .NET or C++ application. And if you need to have super powerful games, you will be able to develop them in C++ or you might do them in C Sharp or in .NET, but we're opening a whole wide array of um, opportunities that will be managed through the Windows Store. In terms of APIs of the Windows Runtime are totally renewed for this Windows Runtime. Just think that we've rebuilt years of evolution in in Win32, we did a reset. We included smart APIs with a right degree of granularity for, for doing everything from video animations, e-wallets, everything you can do with Windows Platform. This is renewed, and we've included them in this new applications runtime. The opportunity of the things that can be done are huge because we have a modern platform that enables you to use many, many things to build application styles, anything you can imagine. The idea is that the platform is an enabling factor not a constraint so that you cannot do something or that you cannot communicate in such and such a type. What are the keys for building a successful application in the store? We have several tips. When we want an application to uh, be remarkable within the store, well, you have to empower that prescriptive design that our TED uh, allows you to have through Windows 8 in Genexus. The application needs to be able to rotate, to have a snap, to have full view, full screen view, to be able to work with different orientations, to work with animations, accelerations provided by the platform. This is quite simple uh, for developers. It needs to have very nice tiles. It's been proved that applications sell eight times more if they have active tiles. If they are used more, then they are sold more. This is uh, this works through word of mouth, uh, recommendations and referrals from one user to another. And if you uh, this uh, application invites users, well, then it's sold much more. This application needs to be connected. <laughs> It needs to have connections with Windows 8, and it needs to allow for searches within the application to send information to another application, receive information from another application. So if you have Twitter there, you don't have to implement the feature of tweeting. Just by being there, you call the tweet. And from then on, you can share that information without having to implement the feature of Twitter. So those type of features that I'm mentioning here are the ones that make an application to become remarkable in the store. You have to empower those differentiating features in the platform. And those are the enabling things for the uh, Genexus 8 product so that you can have those extra contracts in the platform. In terms of the store, this is quite a traditional model. Applications follow one user. I get into the store. I buy. Wilson will be telling you more about the 
different details. Uh, everything is validated in the store. The sign you can download from the store, you can buy from the store. DTI administrators can sign their own applications and install directly on the machine. Every application works in a very protected way in terms of data access with some sort of agreement that controls what is done. And the OS offers a security border frontier. Applications will follow me if I install it in another machine with another account, then they will be downloaded. Now I will give the floor to Wilson because we are running out of time. Tomorrow we will have a drill down, a more detailed drill down as to how WinRT works. Thanks, Pablo. Tomorrow we will have a more technical presentation on this. And now to uh, conclude about this unprecedented um, scope. Obviously, this door is optimized for discovering applications. There's a transparent approval process if you want to have an email client, even though Microsoft already has one. You need to go through quality uh, procedures. This is not a minor thing in other stores. This issue of approving applications is quite complex. This is a transparent, clear process of approving applications. There's a business model that's flexible, allowing for different flavors, and it maximizes the profit for the developer with a higher percentage than the one offered in other stores. We can run trials. We can make purchases within the application. The application is free, but it sells content. It might be free for a certain number of days, or it might be requiring payment. The developer remains 70% of the first $25,000, and after that, it will keep 80% and not 70%, as is done with other stores. I can use my own. A uh, charging model, this is not a minor thing. In eBay, for example, this is already being used. I already have a collection engine and I want to retain 100%. So Microsoft will allow this in terms of retaining 100% of profits. This is quite disruptive in terms of online stores. I can add publicity, whether using Microsoft advertising or not, or by using other online advertisers. I can also offer a free application and then um, have advertisers. And I also have a button that sends analytical information on data analysis as to who is consuming the application, how many times, etc., etc., so that I can make decisions and gradually improve my target audience and the design of that application. And now, summing up, we have reimagined Windows. We have reimagined Windows from a user interface with a new start screen with a concept that Windows becomes an OS that is thought for touch with a good keyboard and mouse support that we believe is very relevant for many scenarios. An OS that's designed for new chipsets, chipsets that have been seen very strongly in the market, such as ARM chipsets, multiple form factors. We don't believe in a single format, a single size that Microsoft has to define, which is the um, electronic device that will be used in the world. We think that's crazy. Every user will choose whatever device he feels fit for whatever scenario. There is a store available in each of these 400 million devices by the end of 2013 that will be able to buy applications and a new model for applications development that uh, renders this dichotomy of choosing HTML or native applications. We thought that HTML5 is just one way of creating native applications in Windows. One thing is HTML5 in web, and another thing is to use it and everything I learned from it so that it is the from end design, but accessing the native API of my application, thus leveraging all the knowledge that I have as a developer from HTML and web technologies. So to conclude, we want to invite you for tomorrow at 9 a.m. 
on four CR uh, um, room. We will talk about deep dive in my Windows 8 RT. And there you have the email address of Mac Microsoft in Uruguay just if you want to contact us. But actually, the most important reference is to the Genexus uh, generator. We are happy that this is being tested, that it, you start downloading it, and that you start uh, um, giving us a lot of applications in the World Store so that you continue to contribute to the Genexus community. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for your time.